Hello everyone, John here, talking about the Aurora Prehistoric Scenes Woolly Mammoth. So, this is the short version of the video. I've actually shot a whole bunch of footage and I'm still coming out with my, or coming up with my, the formatting for how I'm going to do these videos. And right now my thinking is, I do the extended version that has the all the detail of how I did stuff and uh, I am rendering or exporting one right now for this. It's about two hours long. So this is going to be the short Reader's Digest version. So let's get into it. So oftentimes if you get kits on eBay... The boxes may not be in the best condition, as you can see here. But, uh, but you know, it's okay. Uh, I've got a couple of more of them. So I built this as a kid many, 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 many years ago. Uh, and so it was, it was fun to revisit it uh, as a adult model maker i can say that my skills have greatly improved since all those years ago so let's talk about it um i'm continuing on with my process of getting like a toy of whatever model i'm building and doing that as a test bed for my paint scheme and in this case is also for the uh snow uh the which I was using the Vallejo Diorama FX here, trying that out. I've not worked with any kind of snow before, so um, I probably had a little heavier of a hand than I should have, but, you know, okay. Uh, so that worked out well. And and I kind of like when I do this process, if I, I've got like the mini-me of the model, so it's kind of kind of fun all right <clears throat> in addition to that let's talk about the model itself uh, i'm actually going to uh, start with the base this will let go um so the base comes in three parts and i had to do a fair amount of structural assistance to get this to stay together right uh, and I also did a lot of sanding and uh, puttying and sanding um, and then painted it. I was actually pretty happy with the paint as it came out in kind of this almost pink tone for the rocks and uh, then added the snow just enough um, to make it look more realistic. So pleased with the base, same with the, the tree here. Like a lot of my uh, painting, like the tree on this one or on the um, the tar pit that I did, um, I did a dark tone and then a mid tone and a light tone and got more and more dry brushy as I got to the lighter tones. All right, let's talk about this model. This is a big model. It's not as big as the T-Rex, but it is big. And so it had a lot of seam lines to fill on the legs, on the body, and um, so I did, one of the things I tried was using a, um, a hacksaw blade to get the texture. That kind of worked. I tried just using an X-Acto knife. Fortunately, the snow covers a lot of the seam line sins. Um, I, I first, I primed this in a gray, whereas with the base, I primed it in a white. Primed this in a gray and then did uh, a spray Tamiya linoleum deck tan, I believe it is. I think it's FX69, I think. Uh, or TS-69, something like that. Um, and then dry brushed it with uh, 
uh, a brown um, in the eyes. Um, I let's see if I can get close enough. Probably not, but pretty pleased with the eyes. My my normal process with the eyes is to do a um, whatever the sclera color, then the iris color, and then black, and then I'll come back with uh, clear and do a little drop of clear on the eyes to to give it that moistened look. I did for the mouth. Um, can't really see it that much, but it had a big hole. Some of these models, instead of having a roof of the mouth, they have kind of a hole. So I did go in and add with Milliput a roof to the mouth and, um, and then painted that up. For the tusks, I uh, did mostly an off-white, but before I painted them, I did prime them and then I went over it with a wire brush along the tusks to give it kind of that striate. I'm going to use the term striate, striations, but it's probably not right. But grooves, texture, um, so that when I did a dark wash, it would get into those grooves. Um, pretty pleased with how the tusk turned out. I did do a lot of looking at uh, elephant toenails and tusks and uh, mouths to try to get this as realistic as possible. So um, overall, oh, let me talk about this real quick. And I talk about these a lot in my, um, this is possibly the best nameplate I've done. And I've talked about it before, but what I do is I go over with a gloss. I'm sorry, not a gloss. A, um, I believe it's Vallejo model color, uh, model make or model color brass, which to me looks like the right brass for what you'd see at a museum. Um, all around, back and front, and then subsequent quarter. Uh, subsequent uh, coats on just the letters, almost kind of dry brushing them. Uh, then uh, a few coats of the Tamiya Gloss Clear and then uh, light coats of the Tamiya I think it's TS29, don't hold me to that. Or no, that's the spray paint. Is it XF18? It's the semi-gloss black, whatever it is. Uh and then once that dries, oh, and I'll mask off the edges too before I do the black. And then when that dries, I'll take a Q-tip dipped in isopropyl alcohol and make sure you get the excess off so it doesn't go everywhere. And then lightly brush off the letters. And I've been finding that's really giving me good nameplates. So this was a lot of fun to build. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I've got a few more that at some point I'll uh, come back and do in different uh, different coloration, different ways. I have some ideas. I'm thinking maybe like white fur with blue eyes. We'll see what happens. So, but fun to do. Um, and I look forward to whatever the next adventure is. And there will be a next adventure. I've already got some planned. So thanks for joining me and you take care.